All right, today's how-to video is going to be how to make a marabou jig for smallmouth bass. Uh, this is one of the hottest trends right now in the smallmouth bass fishing world. It, uh, it's something that oftentimes they can't resist, especially in cold water situations and when the fish are up a little bit shallower. It's a uh, technique that was kind of kept under wraps for a long time uh, by a lot of northern guys. And now it's it's much more widespread, more mainstream, but man, it still catches a lot of fish. The The biggest issue I have with the marabous are that it's really tough to find them. And it's tough to find the ones that uh, work the way you want them to work. You know, really what you're looking for is a good, thick marabou jig on a very light head and there aren't many people that produce one at a mass produced level. So I've been tying my own for uh, probably 10 years at this point. Um, it's significantly cheaper. They are a pain in the butt to tie. They're messy. And I think that's really why most companies don't produce a marabou jig because they're too expensive. They're too costly and you cannot produce them at a price that uh, really will make them sell well. So, you know, uh, I think most guys that use them either tie them themselves or they go find uh, somebody who is tying them and making them and buying directly from more of a custom maker. Um, in this case, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward as to what you need. You want a, a fly tying vise, you want a thread bobbin. Um, I prefer black thread. I, I prefer pretty much straight black marabou jigs, uh, unless I've got a little bit of color in with the black. Uh, purple can be good, a little tiny bit of orange, a little tiny bit of chartreuse at times, but really I, a straight black is pretty much the best color in my opinion to go with. Um, so I like black thread as well. And then you need some good hooks. Uh, the hooks that I like to use uh, are from uh, Lake of the Woods Sports up in Kenora. I believe it's Brian Gustafson's shop. They've got a head that is designed specifically for this. This is, I think, their elite, their elite head. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's kind of got a concaved head on it. Uh, so when you're bringing it through the water, the head kind of wants the, to rise. And the whole key to fishing a marabou jig is to keep it off the bottom. You want to keep it as close to the bottom as you can, but you want to keep it off the bottom. You don't work it like a jig. You just keep it floating, kind of just free flowing along the along the water column. And that's really why you want a light, light head, like a 30, a 32nd of an ounce, a 16th of an ounce. You know, in some conditions when it's windier, an eighth of an ounce can be good as well. But you really don't see many guys going much heavier than an eighth of an ounce. Uh, the lighter, the better. You know, you guys are building specialty rods. I've got a rod that's just under eight feet long. It's a zero power. It's all about trying to cast these light baits. Um, you know, so you, when you when you fish them, what a lot of guys do is they put a little piece of a plastic chunk on them, you know, whether that's a piece of plastic worm or a little grub or something but most of the time they're they're cutting off any tail of it so you've got like a one inch piece and that's one thing i really like about these jig heads from uh lake of the wood sports it's got a hook keeper built into it you know the the trailer that i put on there is really just a, a one inch chunk of used plastic that i have laying in the boat half the time uh, but it gives you that bulk to, to make much further casts so to tie these, it's it's more about a layering process. So when you get your marabous or your, your marabou feathers, I like to take them apart and kind of go through them because a lot of them aren't, aren't real good. Like in this case, this one's got one big stalk that goes up and it's got a big hollow core. So really the only usable stuff are like the side pieces here or the tip. And it's just, that's not a great piece of marabou. You can use it. Uh, here I've got a piece that really is all just fluff. You know, it doesn't have a big main stalk going up the feather. That's a good one to use. But I'll go through, you know, your, your whole big chunk of feathers and kind of pick out the ones I like and cut off the pieces. But 
you do not want to tie any of those those the the hollow stalk stalk of the feather that'll that'll just be a mess and that's not a part that you want to use you want to just use these nice the the black fluffy pieces and cut any of the stock off so to start i like to just kind of start with a a simple knot to get my line going you know a lot of times when i'm tying just like a hand tied skirt or something i'll just put some on and wrap around i actually do like to get a a knot going in this case just to make sure that my thread is going to stay secured and most of that's because i'm not holding I'm not holding the material as much uh, as I would be with some jig skirt material. You know, that's a fast, quick process. In this case, you know, I'm going to be picking through marabou, you know, while I'm doing this. So I'll cut my tag off. And again, this is a messy process. So, you know, do it on a table or something where you've got some room. Um, it'll just result in a lot of mess because you're going to be cutting off pieces that you want so like this one the stock goes right to the tip and then the rest is just fluff so I'm gonna cut that off get rid of that I like to pull out any of those short ones you can see there's a lot of little fuzz that comes out when I do that and that's not really anything you want you just want those longer those longer pieces All right, and then like I said, this is all about layering. So you're gonna wanna just put a, a little chunk on there. And I, I like mine to be longer, so I'm gonna start with it out, um, out the hook shank a little bit, kind of down that hook keeper just a tad, because again, I like my tails to be longer. I generally tie a bigger hair jig than what you find in the stores. And then what I'll do is I can trim it down as I want to, um, or as I feel the conditions call for, but I'd rather start with a bigger, a bigger amount of fluff. Um, just cause I know I can cut it down. And then it's really just about adding pieces. Like this is another really nice piece with some long, some long chunks and I'll cut that off the stem or where the stem ends and get rid of a bunch of the little fluffy pieces and then I'll just add that on And I use a lot of thread in these because this is one of those things. There's so many little pieces that I feel like the more thread, the more you uh, secure that the marabou pieces on. And that can be a, I think that just helps kind of keep everything locked on. And, you know, it's not, again, it's not like tying a normal jig skirt where you've got all the, you know, you've got strands on a tab and everything stays together. These are much more just time consuming with little chunks all over the place. And again, you want to really go through and pick out the best pieces of marabou. You know, this, this piece has a lot of not real good chunks. Um, close to the to the main stalk but the tip is really nice the tip's just a nice plume and I'll take that you just kind of build it up Couple more pieces and we'll be good to go.
And I know a lot of people do like to put some accent colors in, and I'm not a big fan of that, really. Straight black just seems like it's the best color all around. And it doesn't have to be, like, the most perfect tie job ever. I mean, this thing going through the water just kind of all blends together in its own. But I would say there you go. They've got it. Now I do tie it off. Before I put a dab of super glue on it, I just do a couple of overhand knots. Just to secure it. Cut my tag off. I'll go I'll let this dry and then I'll go back over it and put a, a light coat of uh, a clear nail polish on it but in general you know that's your marabou jig right there in the water that pulls together and it'll just look like a a black leech is what I think it looks like and you know I've got this is my box full of them uh, I don't know if you can see that without me pulling it but I'll, I'll sit down I usually spend a day or two throughout the winter and tie up a whole bunch of them it's just one of those things you know it's a time-consuming process and when you pull them out you don't want you, to you don't want to just do one at a time because it makes a mess your hands by the end of it will be solid black um, so you want to tie a bunch up. So I usually try in a day or two to tie up enough for the, for the next upcoming season. And, uh, you know, I used a bunch of them this year. I use them, you know, all the time. And in this case, I was getting pretty low, but like in this case, you know, this is one I've, I've done already. You'll see how thick that is. I mean, that's a really thick, that's a really sick, uh, thick plume. And when I'm using that, you know, if I want to cut it down, I can cut it down. Uh, and pull it out to, to get different depths. You know, you don't have to, with a marabou, you don't have to necessarily change weights. You know, if you're throwing, the difference between a 30 second ounce and a 16 ounce, you can achieve by pulling some of that hair out as well. So it's nice to have that option. I like to go a little thicker. This is the other head that I like to use. That's just a gopher tackle mushroom head. Um, but really the key to it is, you know, you want a super sharp hook. These are all Gamakatsu hooks that come in both these head styles, um, you know, and having that little keeper one, the one that comes, this is like a, I call that like a modified mushroom head. I'm not sure exactly what they call it offhand, but to have that keeper in there is really nice as well for plastic. But uh, give it a whirl, you know, if you're coming up to smallmouth country, no matter the time of year, I'd, I really recommend having a few marabou jigs with you. It's a super fun bite. Um, you know, when, they, when they're when they eating it, it's really hard for them to resist, and it can be like the best bait going. And uh, you don't want to come up here without a couple of them. So uh, give it a try. You know, buy some marabou. Play around with some different colors, too. Maybe uh, Maybe you can figure out some other colors that work for you in general, black and you know, pretty much straight black is, is the, the best color you can go with, in my opinion. So uh, if you like the video, leave a, a comment below. If you've got some other uh, tying, tying techniques for tying your own marabou jigs, I'd love to know about them. But uh, otherwise, leave a like, uh, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel.